Hey guys, so I've been having a problem with this thing overheating a little bit and it boils over sometimes if you have it full throttle. I replaced the thermostat. There was a bunch of debris on the radiator and I cleaned that all out and I thought that that was the problem actually and it was working for a little while but it's still overheating so I'm thinking that it's the water pump and basically the thing is is like there's no signs that the water pump is bad there's no leaking there's no bearing play there's no fan movement so i've been thinking that it's something internal maybe with the fins on the on the inside of the water pump so i'm going to take this apart and try to figure that out and the, the new water pump for this is like four hundred dollars so i don't want to just go get it in hopes that it's the problem so I'm gonna take it apart first I'm gonna to try to check for a bearing play but I doubt that that's the problem um, and I'm gonna see what else is in there and maybe things are just clogged up I'm not sure but I'll find out so I'm gonna take this apart and figure that out before I go ahead and get that water pump so on this machine it's pretty easy to get to the cooling system there's just this little door here you open up see this radiator right here I took this apart and I pressure washed that off very carefully and there was a lot of debris in the bottom, but yeah, I guess it wasn't the problem. I even tried to take the thermostat out on this to see if that made a difference and it didn't really. So the other thing, there's not really any gases coming out of the out of the coolant. And that's how you can tell if like there's a head gasket bad. I was thinking it was the head gasket at first, but there's there's no gases coming out, so that really shouldn't be the issue. It's possible this thing is still clogged up from something. I'm not really sure. So I gotta take the reservoir out, I gotta take the oil cooler and put it to the side so that I can take this radiator out. Now I know I'm going to lose some fluid here, but there's not a lot I can really do about it unless I drain the whole system. The fluid's kind of low right now anyway, so. Okay, so now that's out of the way, I can start taking out this radiator.
So inside the engine compartment here, this is the thermostat. It's this is the thermostat housing, anyways. The, the thermostat's inside of there. So I just need to take this hose off so I can take this radiator off. So that's it. I just leave the bottom hose on. There's a really thick steel plate underneath it here. And to get the bottom hose disconnected before you take it out is just a lot of work. So as I'm taking this out, I'm moving this fan a little bit so that the, uh, the hose can clear it. See, so now I have much better access here. Now I can actually look inside of the motor to hopefully see what's going on with this. So this fan, you know, I mean, it's a little bit damaged, but it's not, it's not bad to the point where it would cause the engine to overheat. Twelve millimeter bolts. So there's nothing wrong with that. So now I gotta loosen this belt. And the way that you do that on this is you loosen up the alternator and, and that's the tensioner on it. See, so there's there's no play in this at all. So I know that it's not the bearing. You can hear it gurgling too, so I know it's doing something. There's one bolt that's behind this pulley. It's kind of hard to get to because you can't use a ratchet. So I'm going to do this to get a little bit more power to it. Once I crack it, then I don't need it anymore. If I end up putting a new water pump in it, Basically, they don't make this water pump anymore. They make you adapt to a different water pump, which I, I'm hoping is better if I end up needing it. But they give you a new thermostat along with a couple other things. So I know that I need to take this apart anyways. That's why it's $400 because it comes with a lot of other stuff. Normally with a water pump, I would just go out and buy one so I have it when I'm replacing it. but. For almost $500, I think I'll at least check it out first. So I think if I take these big Phillips screws off, this is like a plate. And then I can access the inside of this, because I can't see anything the way it is right now. So I wouldn't recommend using a Phillips head with an impact gun. But you know what? I'm just going to try it anyways. Oh, the gamble paid off for that one. Okay, that's, that's wonderful.
So this is just like a steel plate that goes on here to cover up the impeller. I think once it's in there, now I can kind of pry it open. Well, you know, I don't really see anything wrong with that. I don't know. I mean, there's no bearing play. And remember, this thing wasn't leaking, it wasn't making noise, it wasn't doing anything. It's just overheating. And I'm not getting gases in the coolant, so I'm pretty sure it's not the head gasket. I hope it isn't. Alright guys, so I think I know what the problem is here. Uh, the water pump doesn't appear to be bad at all. I think what it is actually is... This is the this is the crankshaft pulley and it spins the the belt. So there's some sort of like clutch system in this thing and I don't think it's working that great cuz you can just take this thing and just spin it by hand. And also you can see that there's a lot of play in that. You know, it's all it's left and right and back and forth. So I think something's up with this. I don't know if it could just be like loose because it's got oil in it or maybe just there's bearings in there and they're just shot. I think it's just not engaging this enough because this has to drive the alternator, it has to drive the water pump and the fan. So maybe it has enough to do some of that, but but probably not enough. So I'm going to take this out. I already took the bolt out for the crankshaft. So I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to see if I can figure it out further. So this is the crankshaft pulley. And this is what spins the belt on this. And like I said, the belt powers the alternator. It powers the fan. And it powers the water pump. So if you can spin this freely, I mean, chances are when it speeds up, it'll have some resistance and it'll turn it. But it's not going to be near enough. Especially when you're turning all those things. So this is kind of like a clutch system, I do believe, but, you know, even if you, if you spin them as fast as I can spin it and then there's no resistance at all, then there must be something wrong with it. Plus, you can see there's a lot of play with it, see? See, so there's side to side, there's side to side play like this, there's in and out play like this. I think this thing's just worn out. And I think this has been my problem all along. I've heard, a, I've heard a lot about other people that had problems with Hitachis and John Deere. And I, and I wonder if this would be the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and order this part. This was only like $200. But still, like $200 for that? Like what is that? What, why would it be $200? It's actually, with shipping and everything, it's like almost $300. Now, how could that possibly be $300? But I don't know have to deal with it I guess so I also want to make note to everybody that when you're doing this if you need if you need to do this project it's very important inside of here you can see there's a key on the top now that key looks like it can fall right off and right into the motor so what I did is I took this and I spun it around very gently until that key was on the top. So now it really can't fall out. Because if that key fell out and into your crankshaft, you would you would be you'd be in big trouble. Because I mean you'd have to take the oil pan out and hope that it would drop down. But I highly doubt it would. It would probably just stay up in the gears. And as soon as you went to start it, it would probably mesh in between the gears and that would be it. You know, you'd break some gears inside of there. So I would highly suggest to take that thing and put it upright so you have the least chance of it falling down into the motor. And it may be solid in there. It may not even come out. Or not without a lot of force anyways. But I don't want to take any chances.
All right, guys, so here I am the next morning. I just got to Nortrax. This is where you get the parts for a John Deere or a Hitachi machine. They got a lot of nice machines here. I actually just wanted to check to see because on my VIN tag, it says made in Japan. So I'm wondering if they're all made in Japan or whether they stopped making them in Japan at a certain year or something, you know, cause these ones are like brand new. So I wanted to see. Yeah, it does say Japan. I mean, it doesn't say made in Japan, but it says Tokyo, Japan. Wow. You know, on camera, this doesn't really look like it's that big, but I mean, look at my foot compared to that. That's like, that's like a, I don't know, six foot bucket on it. And it's got the tilt option. That's definitely where I want to be. I want the tilt option. And it's kind of got the same quick change but wow, you can see that's like inch and a half steel right there. This is a big machine. This is this is a 300, but it looks huge from here. I mean, these teeth are almost a foot long. It's crazy. Well, someday. All right, so I'm gonna go inside and get these parts. Guys, so I just got this part, okay? I checked it out before I even bought it. So this is the part. And this thing does not spin the way that the other one did. This is solid. There's like rubber in between here to act like as a damper. And this should not be moving at all. I mean, this is absolutely solid, dead solid. It doesn't spin, it doesn't go up and down or side to side, it's solid. So I'm 100% sure that this was the problem. So I can't wait to get back and get it in. guys I just love bridges just the, the amount of massive steel that's on them just really fascinates me all right guys so I wanted to give you another comparison of of what I'm facing here so this is the new part this is the old part now they look like the new parts actually slightly bigger around but if you compare the grooves they're in about the same spot so I think that should be fine. But anyways, this, this is the old one right here. And like I said, this moves around, it wobbles around, it does all kinds of things. This one doesn't move at all. I mean, it, there's nothing that moves about it. It's not even giving at all. So <clears throat> I think that people are gonna find that this is a very common problem with these machines. Cause I've heard of this quite a bit and it's just a mystery of why things are overheating. And people just sort of deal with it. They like, you know, run it at three quarters throttle, keep the, the door open and stuff like that. But <clears throat> I think uh, this is really something that needs to be looked at with any John Deere or Hitachi machine. So, so another thing that kind of bothered me on this situation was that a new water pump was like $400 for this. So that's because they don't make the old water pump. And the other unfortunate thing is that not only do they not make the old water pump, 
but they don't make a gasket for it either. So now I have to put this water pump back in, which is perfectly fine, but I don't have a gasket that I can replace it with. So I'm just gonna use the, uh, the right stuff gasket maker and that should do the trick. But still, I'd rather have the, the OEM gasket for it. So to put this together, all I have to do is line the keyway up on this crankshaft pulley to the key on the crankshaft. And you can tell when it is in by the fact that it can't rotate. So now that that's in there, remember to put the big washer in. So it's good to use an impact gun for this because you can tighten or loosen without turning the motor too much. Otherwise you have to try to find how to stop the motor from turning. So I know that this gun only has 350 pounds of torque, so I know that this chrome socket's probably gonna be fine in it, although you should really never do that and take the chances. It's important to get this surface really clean. Especially any loose material, it's not going to make a good seal between it. I mean, this isn't a head gasket, so you don't have to go crazy with it, but just tr my philosophy is just try your best in a reasonable amount of time. Make sure you don't get any debris inside of the water jackets. So on this water pump, like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with this at all. There's no play. The fins aren't bent. There's not a lot of stuff that's worn down on it. I just don't see any reason to replace that. So it's important if you're using a knife like this, especially if something is aluminum, which I don't think that this is, but if it's aluminum, you can definitely scratch it pretty good with a blade like this. So I'm also trying to keep it at a pretty extreme angle so it doesn't dig into it. I mean, you should really use a regular scraper. I just don't have one right now. And this, this blade is really sharp, so it's easy to dig into it if I don't have the right angle. This cover just basically covers up the impeller there. So now I make a nice gasket on here with this. I've used this stuff a lot actually. It's worked out. It's always worked out really good for me.
I'm trying to get this as thin as possible, but it's not always easy. You don't want a lot that's going to ooze out into the water jackets. So there's a total of five bolts and two nuts to put this on. Three bolts here, two bolts there, and a nut there, and a nut there. The nice thing about this gasket maker stuff is that you don't have to wait for it to set up before you tighten it up. You can torque this to spec immediately. Alright, so now I can go ahead and put my belt back on. So I actually forgot that that's one of the bolts that go to the water pump. It actually holds this alternator too. So I just take that out. Now I'm putting it back in. So what I'm going to do is gently pry against it on the bottom here in a way where it like levers it out until it's pretty tight and then I'll tighten these up so you can see that this washer goes on the back here and those little contours there fit around the the bolts that are already in there and then it, from there, it's just a matter of lining them up with the bolt holes on this. And see, I know I don't have this fan backwards because I can see where it's like a shinier metal right there. And that's where I had these bolts. So I know that this fan is facing the right way. I mean, I could always go back in the video and check for myself, but I know that these are the right way. See, so this fan really should be turning the whole motor if you're turning it. I mean, that's, that's what it needs to be. I mean, the whole motor is turning right now. It definitely wasn't doing that before. So now this is really the trickiest part of the whole process of doing this. And I've done this a couple times now, but it's still tricky. Because you got to leave the bottom hose on the radiator because it's really hard to get to the bottom and unhook it. You basically you have to turn the fan as you're pulling it down and that allows it to go down. So it's important that the bottom is seated properly because there's like bushings on here and just the angle that you need to get this in here, it, it wants to throw you off track from those bushings. So you actually have to take the hose clamp off of it, put the hose clamp on here, fit this through here, 
fit this through here like this and then put the clamp on. You can't get the clamp through this area right here. So now I can go ahead and put my hydraulic oil cooler back. Put the coolant reservoir back in place. So now we need to tighten up these hoses over here that connect the oil cooler to the oil reservoir. So it's important whenever you're putting on hose clamps that you put them on in a way where you can still access them later on because you don't want to face them in a way where you have to take something major off to get to it. And they also move slightly as you're doing it too so you kind of need to predict that. So this machine takes pretty much a gallon, which is really not that much when you think about it. See, so when you have a car or a truck and you're moving along, most 90% of the time, unless you're at an idle, there's air flowing through the radiator. So it's, it's not really an issue, but on a machine, there's never any forced air on that. So the fan is always need the fan always needs to be running. And in this case, the fan was slowed down from this problem, as well as the water pump was slowed down. So it was like there was two things that were making it heat up a lot more than it should. And also, because the fan wasn't working that well, this oil cooler was also getting hot. And I noticed that the hydraulic fluid was always really hot, like really, really hot. So we'll see how that cools down too. So if I'm going to be testing this thing out, I might as well be doing something productive. So I'm going to grade out my driveway. Over the winter, it basically pushed all the gravel down. So I want to smooth it out and then put some more gravel on it.
fairly warm. It's definitely doing the trick now. You can actually hear the fan now. You never could hear the fan before. 